Hello students, in today's session, let us start with a need session 1, pertains to topic Animal Kingdom. Myself, uh, Prakash is I am dealing with the topic uh, Animal Kingdom. So, as you all know, you are preparing for uh, medical examination 2021 and you should know some study tips to prepare for competitive examination so before we are going to start with the questions multiple choice questions pertains to animal kingdom we'll briefly we'll discuss uh, the study tips uh, how to prepare for uh, medical entrance examination so let us start the question arises how to prepare for uh, medical entrance examination look at the quote the best preparation for tomorrow is doing your best today. One. The second one. Do your best. One day you will be someone hopes or someone's heroes. So let us start with the, okay, how to prepare for medical entrance examination. So the first study tip is before you are starting with a beginning with the neat examination 2021 you should collect the syllabus for the examination it's very important okay, very important to have a comprehensive knowledge of the syllabus exam pattern weightage that helps you to prepare for entrance examination as you all know that so neat examination includes 180 questions in total segregated into three parts chemistry physics chemistry and biology so biology section consists of uh, 90 questions in total whereas physics and chemistry physics and chemistry consist of uh, 45 questions respectively the maximum marks awarded are 720 marks further it is divided into three parts 360 marks for uh, in biology 180 in chemistry and 180 in physics for each question four marks are awarded and one mark is deducted for wrong answer so if you are really you want to become a doctor you want to crack the medical entrance examination minimum you have to score 650 marks 650 marks okay so if you start okay you are starting with a medical entrance examination the first study tip is the collect the syllabus for the examination so some topics are not included they are mentioned in ncrt syllabus but not mentioned for neat examination no need to prepare for uh, no need to waste time for such uh, topics so syllabus collection of syllabus or collecting syllabus for the examination is the first uh, tip for uh, neat examination the second point is It's very important is you have to follow the NCRT books only NCRT books only and nearly 90% of questions comes from 90% of questions come from NCRT syllabus only that means you have to read NCRT textbook line by line mark the important facts with the highlighters makes note make notes simultaneously okay after reading or completing ncrt you start reading extra study material available in the form of books preparation websites okay uh, uh, websites 
for biology learn diagrams by by heart to understand the topic pictures helps to retain information more effectively so diagrams are the important factors for 2021 examination one for physics solve as many questions as you can additionally you create a chapter wise formula sheet that comprises all the formulas laws discussed in the cha okay, chapter whereas in chemistry learn diagrams chemical equations by heart after completing every chapter create sheet for chemical equations formula to be used to solve the questions okay so we'll move to the third very important point out and work on weak areas so you may be good in any one one or two subject you are good in chemistry and biology maybe you are good in okay, physics and biology try to work on weaker areas you concentrate more on weaker areas you you people revise as much as possible so you make a weaker thing a strong point is that clear you so this is one point out and work on weaker areas and one more thing very important is so if you have any doubts pertains to the topic or any subjects please approach subject expertise teachers friends etc don't hesitate okay if you have any doubts okay if you want any clarification pertains to that particular topic or particular subject please approach class teachers class teachers subject expertise why because okay why because some if a, a simple concept a basic knowledge if if you if, if you people fails to get basic knowledge okay it will becomes the biggest hurdle for your neat examination if you are preparing for any one topic okay make divide the topic into sub units sub okay sub topics or concepts and try to read it read and write try to understand the concept and point out uh, uh, point out or mark the okay those concept which is not clear for you people and such concept you go to the subject teachers pertains to subject teachers and clarify the doubts this is one next one prepare a weekly schedule so you people if you are preparing for a uh, okay, neat examination scheduling is very important scheduling is very important because you have to prepare for nearly 10 to 12 hours you have to dedicate yourself for for a competitive examination nearly 10 to 12 hours so you make schedule weekly schedule day schedule for example okay study time okay into a small portion 1 to 2 hours each small breaks this will help you in concentrate effectively no need to continue study okay you make a smaller okay smaller study hours 1 to 2 hours and after 2 hours you take a break and start continue this is one point while studying make a points and don't make long sentences keep them short this way you would be able to memorize them fast use abbreviations while making the notes it's very important okay next neat ex examines your basic knowledge keep your basic knowledge strong solving the complex problems requires to you to have a strong fundamentals don't skip any okay don't skip a topic because it seems to be hard read it as as many as time is as required this is one point cover every part of ncert thoroughly most of the questions asked from asked in the examination 
can be found in NCRT. Can be found in NCRT. Okay, so this is one. And the next point: segregate essay and chap tough chapters. So, for example, in biology, there are two. Make it two parts in class eleven. Make it two parts: human physiology and plant physiology. You find difficulty in plant physiology. Okay, segregate those. Okay, those topics. and you allot some extra time for those topics so you read thoroughly reads once or twice or thrice make a notes make a points and try to understand understand the concept this will help you to prepare for neat examination and one more thing you remember while preparing for a neat examination invest your break time into something productive as okay such as uh, music art any sport active sport act activities this will increase your productivity and concentration productivity and concentration next point practice previous year papers so because of okay practicing previous years papers that helps you to prepare thoroughly okay in each subject Prax, practice as many as question as possible for all the three subject this will help you to understand the type of question asked from each topic each topic and you will know how far you stand from your target score the practicing vigorously won't be much effective make timed sessions try to solve certain amount of questions in a fixed time this will help you to overcome a time consultant because in competitive examination time management is very important in neat examination there are 120 180 questions and total allotted time for each question is 1 minute so total allotted time for neat examination is okay 180 minutes so while solving these questions okay please try to manage your time is that it so take as many as test okay mock test or solve mock test papers practice papers it is necessary for the test to be full length you can take chapter wise test within a limited amount of time try to solve previous question papers within a certain period of time solving previous years papers good way to practicing the chapters and topics and next very important thing is revision is very important why because the neat examination includes both the class 11th and class 12th syllabus so after completing class 11th don't forget the topics of class 11th along with the class 11th yeah along with the class 12th you have to prepare for class 11 also so revising okay the chapters you have to already cover will not be okay will not only help you to retain the information but also find a new point that remained unnoticed previously so, is that clear to you so revision is very important and at last okay stay calm stress free because this leads to increase your productivity and score in neat examination so these are the following uh, study tips okay please follow these study tips for medical entrance examination or any competitive examination okay so look at here if if you make a 90 days plan divide okay into 3 months 4 months divide the topics into okay in quarterly basis quarterly basis and according to which you start preparation so this is one and last stay focused never give up 
I saw so many students. They used to, okay, for one and a half year, they're preparing for a neat examination. After one or, okay, after if uh, one or one or two test performance, they give up from the medical entrance examination. They'll start to concentrate on other examination. So please stay focused and never give up. If you are determined, if you want to face, okay, Neat examination in the year 2022. You start preparing from day first only. Okay. So with this, uh, I'll I'll start with the topic animal kingdom. Let us start with the first question. The levels of organization in sponge. So you already know that there are five levels of organization. The one is a cellular grade of organization a cellular grade of organization the second one is a cellular grade of organization third one is tissue grade of organization and fourth one is organ level grade of organization organ level grade of organization and fifth one is organ system grade of organization organ system grade of organization so, a cellular grade of organization is commonly found in unicellular living organism. So, all unicellular living organisms, unicellular living organisms exhibit a cellular grade of organization. The question arises, what is a cellular grade of organization? A single cell, okay, single cell which perform all the life activities digestion respiration excretion reproduction all life processes are conducted by a single cell such a type of uh, okay organization we called as a cellular grade of organization or unicellular grade of organization or we called as a protoplasmic grade of organization protoplasmic grade of organization and it is found in case of uh, phylum protozoa or in case of protista. Next, cell, look at the other okay, types of uh, organization. So, all unicellular living organism exhibit a cellular, whereas uh, multicellular living organisms, multicellular living organisms, they exhibit cellular grade of organization, tissue grade of organization, organ level grade of organization, and organ system grade of organization. So primitive animals, primitive animals, they exhibit cellular grade of organization. Okay, cellular grade of organization. For example, then, for example, porifera is an example. Sponges, they exhibit cellular grade of organization. So correct answer is cellular grade of organization. Then question arises, what is cellular grid of organization? A group of loosely arranged cells, a group of loosely arranged cells which perform all the life activities. And such grid of organization is called the cellular grid of organization. It is found in case, okay, in, in sponges or animals belongs to phylum porifera. Whereas in case of tissue grade of organization, a group of similar cells, they aggregate to form tissues and these tissues which perform specific functions of the body. And it is commonly found in case of phylum cylindrata, okay, phylum cylindrata and tinopora, okay, they exhibit uh, tinopora, they exhibit tissue grade of organization. Then, organ system. Look at here. Cells, cells aggregate to form, aggregate to form tissues, and tissues aggregate to form organs. Organs aggregate to form organ system, organ system, and organ system aggregate to form, aggregate to form organisms. Organism. 
so primitive animals exhibit cellular and tissue grade of organization complex animals they exhibit organ level and organ system grade of organization so is that clear to you so next next question look at here cell aggregate plan is found in that is a cellular grid of organization it is found in case of sponges so correct answer is sponges so in case of nidaria okay nidaria cylindrata phylum cylindrata is commonly known as nidaria why because the process okay they possesses a specialized ectodermal cells those ectodermal cells are called nidoblast or nematocyst nidoblast or nematocyst hence they are called nidaria so in case of nidaria you find tissue grade of organization in case of roundworm uh, you find organ system grade of organization organ system grade of organization whereas in case of flatworms you find organ level grade of organization organ level grade of organization so in case of sponges you find cell aggregate plan or cellular grid of organization okay so next question the level of structural organization found in hydra and jellyfish look at here hydra and jellyfish belongs to phylum cylindrata phylum cylindrata so in case of cylindrata okay cylindrata they are they exhibit tissue grade of organization already i told you in case of porifera cellular in case of protozoa a cellular from ascalamanthus onwards ascalamanthus onwards okay they exhibit organ system grade of organization so when you look at the before option option a b d are wrong whereas option c is a correct answer next we'll want to the deuterostomic animal so deuterostom means based on the xylem so based on the xylem again animals are classified into okay three groups one is a xylem a xylem the second one is pseudo xylem pseudo xylem and the third one is called u xylem u silo okay so you already know that a silo it includes only one group of animals that is flatworms or okay flatworms or platy elementus they exhibit a silo whereas round worms round worms or uh, or ascalamanthus they exhibit pseudo silo from annelida onwards they exhibit u silo so human beings they are eucilomates so when you look at the eucilom so eucilom is again broadly classified into two groups two groups one is protostomes protostomes and other one is deuterostomes deuterostomes so in case of protostomes anus develops first amel uh, sorry so in case of uh, protostomes mouth develops first and after that anus develop aagta deuterostomes ol gen aagta first anus develop aagta next gen develop aagta mouth develop aagta ಅಂತ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ನಾವು ಏನಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಿ ಡಿಟಿರೋಸ್ಟೋಮ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಿ ಸೊ ಡಿಟಿರೋಸ್ಟೋಮ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಎಂದಾಗ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಏನ್ ಬರ್ತದ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಒನ್ ಈಸ್ ಎಕಿನೋಡರ್ಮೆಟ ಎಕಿನೋಡರ್ಮೆಟ ಒನ್ ಹೆಮಿಕಾರ್ಡೇಟ ಹೆಮಿಕಾರ್ಡೇಟ ಕಾರ್ಡೇಟ ಅಂಡ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಒನ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾರ್ಡೇಟ ಕಾರ್ಡೇಟ whereas anelida arthropoda mollusca okay they are protostomes proto 
ಸ್ಟೋಮ್ಸ್ ಯಾಕಂದರೆ ಮೌತ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಆಗ್ತದ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಏನಾಗ್ತದ ಏನಸ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಆಗ್ತದ ಡಿಟಿರೋ ಸ್ಟೋಮ್ಸ್ ಒಳಗೆ ಫಸ್ಟಿಗೆ ಏನಸ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಆಗ್ತದ ಓಕೆ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಏನಾಗ್ತದ ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಮೌತ್ ಆಗ್ತದ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೌತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಏನಸ್ ಸೊ ಡೈಜೆಸ್ಟಿವ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಎಂಟಿ ಓಕೆ ಓಪ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಮೌತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಂಡ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಏನಸ್ ಎಂಡ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಏನಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಟ್ ಕ್ಲಿಟ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ when you look at here deuterostomic animals sea anemone belongs to phylum belongs to phylum cylindrata starfish belongs to phylum echinodermata pearl oyster belongs to phylum mollusca cabbage butterfly belongs to phylum arthropoda so look at here deuterostomic example echinodermata hemichordata chordata so starfish belongs to phylum echinodermata so correct answer is uh, starfish okay so next next question so diploblastic animals occurring annelida porifera cylindrata both b and c so diploblastic animals normally it is found in case of phylum cnidaria or cylindrata what is diploblastica if uh, the body plan of an organism body plan of an organism organism is derived from is derived from two germ layers two germ layers that is outer ectoderm outer ectoderm and inner endoderm inner endoderm so mesoderm is absent mesoderm is absent instead of mesoderm you find non cellular mesoglia such a type of animals are called diploblastic animals diploblastic animals and it is found in case of phylum cylindrata triploblastic means what if entire body plan is derived from three germ layers outer ectoderm inner endoderm in between mesoderm such animals are called diploblastic animals so diploblastic animals and the example and the kelidaga cylindrata vanda bartada because porifera dolage enaktu the cells are loosely arranged into two layers so outermost layer is called pinacoderm the inner layer is called coenoderm inner layer is called coenoderm these are not true germ layers the germ layers are found in okay germ layers are found in case of cylindrata that is outer ectoderm inner endoderm okay so next next we'll move to the next question silom is absent porifera cylindrata platy elementus all the above so silom when you talk about silom silom is a body cavity present between gut wall and the body wall so this we call it as a the gut wall and this is body wall the space which is found in between the body wall and the gut wall body wall and the gut wall gut wall is called is called silom this is silom silom so in silom is absent in case of porifera cylindrata platy elementus okay so in all these animals silom is absent so correct answer is all of the above ursilomids so what is the difference between eusilom and ursilomids look at here i'll draw okay two diagrams this is pseudosilom a cavity is present but that cavity is not lined by mesodermal epithelium whereas in case of uh, eusilom the cavity is lined by mesodermal epithelium the cavity is lined by mesodermal epithelium such type of cavity we called as a u silom u silom so correct answer is option d is a correct answer 
So next we'll move to the next question. Next question. Echinoderms and chordates have. So echinoderms and chordates have which type of silom? So echinoderms and chordates they have enterocilum. Enterocilum. So you already know that. Okay. There are two types of silom. U silom. One is schizocilum. Another one is enterocilum. So schizocilum. Look at here. The schizocilum is formed by the splitting of mesodermal epithelium. This is mesodermal epithelium, which uh, okay splits the body cavity. Splits the body cavity. Such a type of silom is called schizocilum. Schizocilum. Whereas in case of uh, enterocilum, the silom is formed by out pouching of uh, out pouching of uh, endoderms. So. So endoderm outpouch as a result of this a cavity is formed and this cavity we called as a enterocilum enterocilum. So so correct answer is option C is a correct answer. Next we'll move to the radially symmetrical animals diploblastic radially symmetrical diploblastic animals. Look at here. Round worm is a bilaterally symmetrical. Earthworm is bilaterally symmetrical. Liver fluke is bilaterally symmetrical. So asymmetrical is a hydra. So it belongs to phylum Cylindrata. Cylindrata. So hydra is a correct answer. Next one. The radial symmetry is often exhibited by animals having one opening of elementary canal, aquatic mode in living, benthos and sedentary nature, ciliary mode of feeding. So the animals uh, which are attached to the substratum, they are found in the bottom of the okay, water bodies. Venthos, sedentary, okay, sedentary means what? Again, they always remain attached to the substratum. Such animals exhibit a radial symmetry. And you already know that radial symmetry, and you know, when you cut the animal, any axis passing through center, you find equal images, equal images and such type of symmetry we call uh, uh, called uh, well, okay, blood vessels in case of uh, open type of circulation the blood vessels are absent the blood flows within the body cavity and such type of body cavity we called as a hemocilum and it is hemocilum is found in case of scolopendra scolopendra and you know, scorpion which belongs to phylum arthropoda so in case of arthropoda mollusca except cephalopoda okay they exhibit hemocilum so what is hemocilum okay silum is filled with the blood next question cell cell aggregate plan is found in okay volvox colonial protozoans porifera both a and c so the cell aggregate uh, Okay, body plan is commonly found in case of volvox and porifera. Next, the path of water in sponge. The one of the peculiar characteristic feature of uh, okay, picture, feature of porifera is uh, they exhibit a water canal system. Water canal system. So, what is the role of water canal system? Okay, this is a specialized channel system through which water enters the body cavity and drains out through anterior opening called anterior opening called osculum so the water in sponge okay first it moves through the dermal ostea then gastral ostea spongocele cavity and osculum osculum and look at here so dermal ostea so the body of porifera they possesses uh, minute openings Okay, on the surface, it possesses minute opening, and these openings are called dermal ostia. Dermal ostia. So, this is about uh, question number 13. We'll move to the question number okay, 14. Bath sponge is commonly found in Red Sea, Gulf, Mexico, Pacific Islands, and D. Mediterranean Sea. So correct answer is Mediterranean Sea. 
Next one, the phylum, okay, the classification of phylum porifera is based on, is, it is purely based on, the classification of porifera is purely based on the chemical nature of spicules. Chemical nature of spicules. So, based on the chemical nature of spicules, spicules are broadly classified into three types. One, okay, calcareous spicules, calcareous spicules. Then, second one is siliceous spicules. That one of the characteristic features of sponge is they exhibit a great power of regeneration. So, self amputation after the parts in act the parts in act the separate act and each part develops into new individual new individual next question next question which of the following is do not have a polyform do not have a polyform you already know that uh, the cylindrata one of the peculiar characteristic feature of cylindrata is polymorphism polymorphism poly means many morphism means morphological structure that means a single individual occur more than two morphological forms such such okay type of uh, animals or such a type that that phenomenon is called polymorphism normally in case of cylindrata exhibit polymorphism in case of cylindrata okay they you find uh, two morphological forms one is a medusa and the second one is polyp so what is the difference medusa is uh, sedentary it is sedentary whereas polyp is uh, polyp form is uh, free living free living next question okay We'll move to the next question. Next question. Which of the following is a polymorphic cylindrata? Polymorphic cylindrata is those animals which belongs to class hydrozoa. Hydrozoa. They exhibit polymorphic silomates. Uh, they are commonly called polymorphic silomates. Example is, uh, okay, you will get uh, plenty of okay, example. The one example is uh, polymorphic morphic forms. Okay? Example is under hydra, hydra. Next, cylindrates, characteristic larva. The cylindrate characteristic larva is under planular larva. Whereas in case of, uh, okay, in case of, so in case of cylindrates, the larval forms is planular larva, whereas in case of porifera, amphiblastula. Rabidity form found in case of uh, ascalimanthus, oncospear and cystricus larva is found in case of uh, platyelminthus, phylum platyelminthus. So, correct answer for okay, larval stage of uh, cylindrata is planula larva. Planula larva. Next question. Jellyfish is placed in which class of cylindrata? So, so based on the morphological forms, phylum cylindrata is classified into three classes. Class Hydrozoa, the first one, Hydrozoa, where the polyform is dominant, Medusa is okay, short living. In case of sky, Skyphozoa, Medusa form is dominant, whereas uh, whereas uh, uh, poly form is short living. Whereas in case of anthozoa, you anthozoa you find only poly form. So jellyfish, Aurelia, which belongs to class Skyphozoa. So correct answer is Skyphozoa is a correct answer. Okay. Next question. Nematocysts are activated. So you already know that nematocysts are the specialized ectodermal cells found in case of uh, cylindrate. And the nematocysts are activated by physical and chemical stimuli. Water, touch, brain, none of the above. 
So correct answer is touch is a stimulus. This is a physical stimuli that activates a nematocyst. Polymorphism occurs in anthozoa, scyphozoa, rhizopoda, hydrozoa. So polymorphism occurs in case of uh, hydrozoa. It has two forms. One is polyform and the one is mediciform. And you remember polyp is a sedentary form. It is sedentary. It is always remain attached to the substratum. Whereas medusa is a free living. It moves from one place to the other, other place. Okay. And the polyp reproduced by a sexual method. Whereas medusa reproduced by sexual method. That's why polyp is called a sexual zooid, whereas medusa is called sexual zooid. So both these forms are found in case of class hydrozoa. Hydrozoa. So next, next question. Dinopores have similarities with uh, with members. When look at the class, okay, phylum cylindrata and dinopore both shares common characters both are diploblastic both are radially symmetrical okay radially symmetrical exhibit tissue grade of organization so when you look at the phylum tinopora and cylindrata both have similarities look at the options porifera cylindrata arthropoda annelida so correct answer is uh, phylum cylindrata next question selenocytes and nephridia are respectively found in so you already already know that selenocytes and nephridia are excretory okay specialized excretory cells and what is the role the the role of these cells is uh, it helps in removal of uh, nitrogenous metabolic waste substances nitrogenous metabolic waste substances nitrogenous metabolic waste substances selenocytes are commonly known as uh, flame cells and these flame cells are found in case of platy ele platy flatworms whereas nephridia are the excretory cells found in annelida so correct answer is okay platy and annelida and annelida and nematodes nematodes so nematodes belongs to phylum ascalimanthus there you find excretory cells are rennet glands rennet glands or excretory canals in case of nidaria it takes place by general body surface excretory cells are absent whereas in mollusca metanephridia mollusca metanephridia whereas echinodermata you don't find any specialized excretory cells so correct answer is option a is the correct answer okay so next we'll move to the next question next question the free living platy elementus okay one is turbularia cystoda trematoda trematoda and cystoda so correct answer is uh, turbularia okay is a free living platy elementus whereas cystoda and trematoda are parasitic forms for example liver fluke liver fluke and tapeworm they are parasitic whereas planaria planaria is a free living platy elementus belongs to class turbularia that means platy elementus is classified into three classes okay one is uh, turbularia second one uh, sorry turbularia second one is uh, trematoda and third one is uh, cystoda Sister. Next question. Next question. Platy elementus represents an example. Cellular grid of organization, tissue grid of organization, organ level grid of organization, and tissue organ grid of organization. The correct answer is organ level grid of organization. Next question. Pseudocilum is not found in. So pseudocilum is found in case of Ascaris, which belongs to okay, Ascalimanthus and Cyclostoma, which also belongs to phylum Ascalimanthus, whereas Fasciola hepatica, which is commonly known as liver fluke, 
and liver fluke belongs to phylum platyelminthus okay platyelminthus in case of platyelminthus you find a silom a silom so pseudocilum is not found in case of uh, liver fluke okay why in case of liver fluke the cavity is absent next question anus is absent look at here peritema peritema earthworm is commonly known as uh, peritema periplaneta cockroach is known as uh, uh, commonly known okay scientific name of uh, cockroach is periplaneta americana unio belongs to phylum mollusca so periplaneta peritema unio digestive system is complete that means it starts with a mouth ends with the anus whereas fasciola hepatica you find incomplete type of digestive system incomplete type of digestive system only mouth is present anus is absent anus is absent absent so correct answer is okay fasciola hepatica fasciola hepatica so we'll move to the last question the example of digenetic platyelminthus digenetic platyelminthus what is the question arises what is digenetic if a parasite parasite completes a life cycle completes life cycle in one host and such type of uh, okay life cycle we called as a monogenetic type of life cycle if parasite endoparasites completes life cycle in two host two host then it is called digenetic so fasciola hepatica it's a platyel belongs to phylum platyelminthus and it completes life cycle in two host hence it is a digenetic type of life cycle whereas roundworm is a monogenetic type of life cycle because it completes a life cycle in only one host that is human beings whereas fasciola hepatica completes a uh, life cycle in two host hence it is called digenetic type of life cycle so with this uh, we'll end with the first session in the se in the next session we'll continue the uh, same topic with the different phylums thank you